The question of SIU's blog posts being considered canon or not is something I've truly never thought about. I think all of us for a very long time within the community have just taken SIU's word as law. Anything that SIU says, whether it's in the chapters or the blog posts, or even on social media sometimes, are canon. However, with SIU taking down his blog posts somewhat recently, I think it's raised some questions in the community about the validity of these blog posts. Are they canon? Are they not canon at all? Or is it canon until proven otherwise? The reason I started thinking about this was because I saw a thread by Nico in the Tower of God subreddit, which essentially claimed that the blog posts made by SIU are not canon. Not even canon until proven otherwise, but just not canon. The comment that Nico specifically makes is, it is not canon until proven in the story. And then Nico lists a few quotes from SIU essentially claiming that these blog posts are more for fun than anything else. Even SIU himself is claiming that these blog posts should not be taken as literally as in the main story and that the purpose of these blog posts is more for fun, expanding the world, but not in any way that is truly canon. SIU says until they are actually shown on the episodes, it is safe to assume that they are not confirmed yet. A comment made on a similar thread by Sir Bassoon Sonata says that SIU's blog posts should be treated more like a first draft. If they are treated as a first draft, they're more like hints at what could happen in the future, but not themselves actually the truth. Let's use the Three Lords as an example, right? SIU has wrote extensively on the Three Lords, telling us who each of the Three Lords are, and the system under the Three Lords, what their roles are and duties are. However, they've never been mentioned in the main story. So if we treat this as a first draft, the Three Lords aren't canon. They shouldn't be on the wiki, and until they're shown in the story, we shouldn't even be factoring them in. Or if we do factor them in, it has to be with a lot of leeway, with a huge grain of salt. To compound onto this, some of the blog posts have been retconned. The most common example, the one that I like to bring up, is Yama's backstory, right? Yama didn't used to be the character that we all see in season three. He used to be a lot more of a crime lord, whose Bay Lord, which was the location that he lived, was a lot more debaucherous, I would say, um, with prostitution and gambling and all kinds of things happening there. And the story regarding him and his former master, very different from what we have now, which kind of proves the point that these blog posts, if that was truly canon, we wouldn't have had this contradiction. I asked my community recently about other examples of contradictions in the blog posts. And at one point, SIU did say there are only two REA princesses. Arie Hagatherion and Arie Horn. However, later on during the name hunt station, we had a name reveal for a certain Arie Rose Jihad, which, kind of a tangent, maybe is explained by the fact that she's Artcrafter's daughter, I don't know. So that's a seeming kind of contradiction, a mild one, but a contradiction nonetheless. We also had a statement from SIU that said princesses are chosen every hundred years or so, but some of my comments pointed out that princesses being that rare doesn't really make sense considering we have Endorsi and Lilial and Shilial and Kun Maria all kind of climbing at the same time, not to mention Rose, who's also a regular. There's a lot of princesses who are active right now. This one could maybe be explained because we know endorsey has been around for at least 300 years, and so possibly she was chosen as a princess but didn't start climbing right away. There are other potential retcons like maybe Rax lineage, maybe the Wraith Razor tribe that SIU said he was from, maybe that's been scrapped because now we know Rack is a descendant of the ancients. Overall, there aren't that many examples. The Yama one stands out and a couple other little details here and there, but overall, I would say the blog posts have actually been rather consistent. I would say the biggest example of a retcon in the blog post is SIU saying that Wong Nan's climb would be one of the main axes of the story. I miss him so much. Now, I wanna provide some examples in the other direction, right? I wanna provide examples where the blog posts actually got future stuff right. Now, it's easy to say little details. I wanna to try to mention bigger things that without the blog posts, we wouldn't have had any context for, and we'd have we'd be completely lost in the main story. The biggest example I can think of is Han Sung Yu during the Nest Arc. Once Han Sung Yu is captured by Perseus, and Traumarai is there, and Traumarai tells him to just kill Han Sung Yu, Han Sung ends up saying something which compels Traumarai to say 
he's the one that my friend has been searching for. Now, without the blog post's content, we'd have zero idea what Traumarai is talking about here. But a lot of us readers quickly picked up on the fact that years and years and years ago, SIU said that Han Sung Yu had a connection to blood matter, some kind of deep connection. We have no idea what that is, but with that chapter, we actually have some context behind that line. And it seems like over however many years it's been since SIU said that, there's a consistent through line. We can talk about Pobo Dao Gustang and Eurasia Blossom's relationship. With just the chapters alone, we would have almost no idea of what happened between Gustang and Blossom. We obviously got a bit about Eurasia Ann, but overall, the fact that like the public knows about their falling out and the fact that Traumarai was making fun of Gustang for that falling out and their split, a lot of that stuff is missing context without the blog posts. The names of various characters that showed up later were introduced in such things like the blog post, as far as I'm aware, one example being Luzlek, another example being uh, the Lopobia family head, right? Like, even in the main story, we never got Traumarai's name, and in the blog post, we never got Traumarai's name. They kind of coincided to make the Traumarai name reveal pretty awesome. To piggyback off of all this, I believe that it's worth mentioning that there is info in the blog posts that we all sort of take as canon, which have not officially been revealed. Like, if we only take the chapters as the only canon, period, that's it, there are a lot of things that we actually don't know. Some things that we all take for granted, some things that we all just assume is canon. For example, the Tupere family. Now, I could be wrong about this. If you find something, I'll pin it in the comments, let me know. But I personally don't think that the Tupere family has ever even been mentioned in the main story. That's one of the examples that I think is only in the blog posts. Once again, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think it's been mentioned. We see Jaina, we see the operas and such, but I don't believe the sort of Tupere family as a whole has been mentioned. And if it has been mentioned, I don't think it's been mentioned in the context of being one of the great families, right? Like maybe some kind of offhanded comment about the Tupere family with the opera. Even then, I haven't found that but that doesn't explain that they're one of the 10 great families. The blog posts are what told us what the 10 great and who the 10 great families are. If we just sort of scrap them all, then technically we don't know what the 10th great family is. There is info in the blog posts that at this point is so deeply intertwined into the Tower of God main story that we kind of forget that's mostly just blog post information. And maybe I'm to blame, right? Like a lot of the lore videos I've made rely heavily on and obviously heavily on these blog posts. And a lot of that is also due to the Tower of God wiki treating these blog posts as canon, which I don't blame anybody for, because once again, I think we all sort of were under this assumption for a long time. But another thing I want to bring up are the mobile games. Now, obviously, the mobile games are not canon. The story that takes place, right? Like, Escanor is not canon to Tower of God. However, one example I always remembered in Tower of God Great Journey is that the relic system features things from the blog posts. For example, Malik PGR and Flux and Juchun are three tiers of the relic system that you can craft and create and merge together. So even though the Tower of God Great Journey game itself isn't like canon to the story, it is an official Tower of God game that contains blog post information. All of this to say, I've been thinking about this a lot and trying to figure out where does this answer lie on the spectrum of canon or not canon? If you ask me, I believe the Tower of God blog posts should be somewhere in the middle, but leaning towards the canon side. Now, maybe that's unpopular, but the reason I say it is because of the consistency that's been seen in the blog posts. We've barely had any retcons, and we've had a lot of information that's been proven right through the blog posts. And if we treat it like a first draft, that's a huge backbone of the story, right? Like sure, the details might change, but I do think it's fair to treat it as semi-canon, and if it's proved wrong, we shouldn't be crushed, we shouldn't be like, what's going on, SIU, right? We should take it and say, oh, he changed that, that's really cool. So I say it's semi-canon in that the story doesn't rely on the blog posts entirely, but the blog posts can help us understand what's happening in the story, and it's not completely strange. We're not just doing it because we feel like it. It's not wrong to do so. And I'm not claiming, by the way, that anybody says it's wrong. I'm just saying that 
if we treat the blog posts as semi-canon, we can use that to help fuel our understanding of the story, give us ideas about stuff that could happen later on, characters that could appear later on that are only within the Tower of God lore blog post stuff. It's stuff that we can use to help us read through Tower of God and help theorize and have fun, but we're not treating it as entirely 100% infallible. So overall, the blog posts are not completely canon, but they're also not completely uncanon either. They're somewhere in the middle, in my opinion, leaning towards canon, not to say that they're infallible. And I saved the best example of them being not completely canon for the very end, because the obvious best example of the blog posts not being fully canon is the fact that SIU said that Chang died in the blog post, and it was disproven later by what Doom said to Yama. It doesn't make sense. The blog posts are not fully canon. I rest my case. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like and subscribe for more Tower of God content very soon. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.